Today, I'm going to give you 11 really bizarre, wild vitamin D deficiency symptoms. Now, of course, most people know the usual vitamin D symptoms, lower back pain, depression, high blood pressure, inflammation, autoimmune diseases, things like that. But I will guarantee you do not know these. Now, I'm going to break this up in two sections. The first part of this video is for the person who wants just bare bones information. They don't want anything too technical. And then the second part of the video, I'll go into those people who want the science behind it, the mechanism behind these symptoms, and like the underlying reason why they develop in the first place. You have about 25,000 genes in your body, and 10% of those genes are greatly influenced by vitamin D. Not to mention when you get your blood tests with vitamin D, they're only showing you the inactive vitamin D. They're not showing you what's happening in the cells. And so the blood levels of vitamin D do not correlate very well with the vitamin D that are in your cells. It's an active suppression of anything positive about vitamin D in the news, in medical research, because it directly competes with the top selling drugs. I got up and presented this data to, you know, these were the top vitamin D researchers in the world all assembled there. It was vicious. The attacks of how vitamin D doesn't do this. How could you say this? I said, I'm just presenting the data that we have assembled. You're walking on guys' careers that have spent their whole career doing this stuff. They never conceived that this could be true. So let's dive in. Okay. Number one, head sweating. Now, typically you'll see this in infants, but you can also see it in teenagers, adults. But if you notice like a child or yourself sweating just more in the head, suspect a vitamin D deficiency. Number two, sweating more at night, even if your temperature is cool. Now this can also show up with your pillow being moist in the morning. So excess sweating, especially at night, is a vitamin D deficiency. Number three, mood swings. A person going from a condition or emotion of happiness down to feeling irritable, down to angry, and then they get sad because vitamin D controls the regulation of your mood and it heavily influences emotions. And this has a lot to do with how vitamin D affects your brain. But if you notice that yourself or a loved one is just like roller coasting with these emotions, it could be a vitamin D deficiency. Number four, procrastination, being backlogged, and you just don't feel productive. I mean, it's pretty wild that someone's motivation is connected to a vitamin D deficiency. All right, number five, panic attacks. Now, in other videos, I talk about panic attacks being a vitamin B1 deficiency, and it can be, but you also have a vitamin D connection to this as well. A panic attack is a very severe fear or a very high anxiety condition. And it definitely relates to certain hormones and neurotransmitters like serotonin. But for those people out there that have panic attacks, resort to drugs, they might wanna consider trying high doses of vitamin D3. I've done videos on certain breathing techniques that a person can do as well, like breathing through your nose. And I will put that link down below, but don't forget vitamin D. Number six, achiness in your pelvis, in your lower back, in your hips, in your upper legs. Vitamin D is intimately connected with the formation of bone. And one symptom of that is literally pain, but not sharp pain, this achiness that's the inside of the bone because that's where you're losing the bone on the inside. It's sad because it's so easy to fix, but you would have to take higher amounts, not lower amounts. I'm talking like 10,000, 20,000, at least, if you have any concern about 20,000 I use of vitamin D3 being toxic, I just wanna let you know that being out in the sun in the summer for 40 minutes will give you 20,000 I use of vitamin D3. Is that toxic? No. 200,000 I use of vitamin D3 taken over months, that's when you get into the toxic effect, not 20,000 I use. So then we have number seven, which is loss of muscle strength. Vitamin D has a direct effect on calcium itself. And without vitamin D, calcium is gonna be deficient in the muscle. Calcium allows the muscle to contract, but not only contraction, it's also involved in the production of muscle itself. So without vitamin D and calcium, you cannot create muscles. And we also get this weakness within muscles that control power and strength, primarily your legs and your shoulders. And on top of that, vitamin D also controls and regulates pain. Number eight, stiffness. And the stiffness usually occurs in the knees and in the fingers. And of course, this definitely relates to inflammation, but it also has to do with what vitamin D does to your cartilage and your collagen. So you might find that when you stretch backwards, 
and create tension on the cartilage in your breastbone, you might feel stiffness in that area as well. And that can also affect breathing, things like that. Number nine, chronic fatigue. This has a lot to do with those little energy factories in your cell. They're called mitochondria. And how important vitamin D is to support that little factory. And if you don't have enough vitamin D, you just can't make energy. Number 10, your ability to think quickly is diminished. Basically, you have too many applications open on your desktop computer, but related to your brain. And number 11, it's just very difficult to be satisfied when you eat a meal. It could be that the food is just nutritionally empty and you keep eating to get these nutrients. It can also be certain things in the food that cause you to be addicted. But if you're low in vitamin D, you're just not going to feel satisfied. You will definitely have a tendency to overeat. So now that you know the general information, let me just kind of give you another layer of this data on each point, which is actually very interesting. Okay, number one was head sweating. There's something different about the head versus the rest of the body as far as certain sweat glands. We have a lot more sweat glands in our head than other parts of our body. It affects the autonomic nervous system, causing this excess sweating in the head. Now, this also relates to number two when we talked about night sweats, but there's something else going on with night sweats. Vitamin D suppresses an overactive immune system. And just think about the immune system of all the things that happen. One would be like a fever, right? That's a normal response. And so when you're deficient in vitamin D and you have a slightly overreactive immune system, this whole mechanism of sweating is controlled by this little tiny computer chip in your brain called the hypothalamus. And when you have a vitamin D deficiency in this overreactive immune system, it's going to trigger excess sweating to compensate for this immune imbalance situation. And one aspect of this is a fever. Your body is generating more heat and with that comes more sweat to compensate, all coming from a vitamin D deficiency. All right, number three is a mood swing, okay? Now, when we kind of come up and down on this emotional roller coaster, you have your adrenals involved. Now, the adrenal gland, starting with the hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal is on this HPA axis, this circuit thing going on. But when you're vitamin D deficient, cortisol is going to go up. Now, I don't know if this is just because it's trying to help you get rid of inflammation. I don't know about that. But with a vitamin D deficiency, you're going to have a dysregulation of this cortisol pattern. And if you have too much cortisol, it's going to put you more in a different emotional state. Let's go to number four, which is low motivation to do. In the brain, there is this little center. It's a tiny little nerve bundle. It's quite fascinating. It's called the nucleus accumbens. And this is the heart of a lot of things, including addictions. It kind of runs on dopamine. And yes, dopamine is involved in addictions, but it's also a neurotransmitter that's involved with motivation, reward, doing things, getting things done, that type of thing. All right, number five, panic attacks, a high level anxiety, a very strong fear. Panic attacks from a physical standpoint in the body are related to that structure I talked about in the brain called the amygdala. That's more like an adrenal in the brain. It's kind of like it regulates fear. That needs vitamin D. We have several things going on. We have serotonin, which is kind of like a, a happy hormone. And so vitamin D is, is necessary to balance these two things. All right, number six, achiness in the pelvis area and the lower back and the upper thigh muscle. Now this relates to a condition called osteomalacia. Now, what is osteomalacia? That's a severe vitamin D deficiency that's affecting the calcium in the bone. Now, think about this. Vitamin D deficiency is the number one cause of osteomalacia. This is basically where the bones become very soft. I think this is going on in a massive scale in society right now, but they have a subclinical version of osteomalacia. I think I had it in high school because I was eating poorly and I, I know I had a, a vitamin D deficiency and I started getting fractures, but the bones are soft certain proteins that are just not developing as well. You have to realize that vitamin D, you know, controls calcium absorption by 20 times in the small intestine. And in other videos, I talk about the two systems of vitamin D. You have the one that controls calcium and the other system that is non-calcium. Yes, you can check the vitamin D in the blood. If you tested that, chances are that's going to be pretty low. It's probably going to be 30 or less. In which case, you just need to start taking vitamin D3. And I would take a lot of it. I would take at least 10,000 to 20,000 IUs per day until you can get your levels a little bit higher. For this bone problem, 
you could probably get away with taking it sporadically like once a week if you want to do that, but I wouldn't do that if you had the problem. So that's number six. Let's go to number seven, loss of muscle strength. Why? Because vitamin D controls calcium and calcium controls the contraction of the muscle. If you're missing calcium because you don't have enough vitamin D and you can't contract What's going to happen with that muscle? Pain that's kind of all over. It's hard to pinpoint. It's just achy. All right, number eight is stiffness, mainly in the knees and the finger joints because the cartilage needs vitamin D and it's not getting vitamin D. So it's going to be more inflamed in the weight bearing joints on your knees. Could be the hips as well. But also if you use the computer a lot or your fingers, you're going to notice it in the fingers. This can definitely lead to osteoarthritis. This is a lack of vitamin D. Vitamin D is essential for maintaining this cartilage and maintaining the ligaments and the tendons. And think about this, your ribs attach to the sternum with cartilage. So you're gonna notice it right through here too. And so this is why stretching is so important to really keep this rib cage opened up because it'll tend to be contracted, inflamed and pull you forward down here. So you end up having bad posture and kind of a hunchback. And not just take vitamin D, but they need to do a lot of stretching to reverse that. All right, number nine, chronic fatigue syndrome. There's two different reasons for chronic fatigue syndrome. One is that your vitamin D controls the number of mitochondria that are produced. The mitochondria are the energy factory. So you're gonna have less mitochondria, it's less energy. So without vitamin D, you're gonna have dysfunctional mitochondria. But the second reason for chronic fatigue syndrome is the immune connection. If you are low in vitamin D, certain viruses will come out of remission and be active. These viruses, especially the Epstein-Barr virus, will start to come out of remission and be active. One of the symptoms that they produce is fatigue. So it's not like you have this full-blown infection. Now you get certain aspects of that infection like chronic fatigue. Nearly 100% of the people that have this reactivation of this Epstein-Barr virus or chronic fatigue syndrome, it came after a, a severe loss, loss of a loved one or loss of a job or something like that. But also it could be a vitamin D deficiency, which by the way, if you have vitamin D deficiency and you go through a loss, boy, it, that stress is gonna hit you a lot harder. You just need a lot of vitamin D. I would take 50,000 IUs of vitamin D3 every single day to pull yourself out of chronic fatigue syndrome. All right, number 10, mental sluggishness or slowness with decisions, thinking, focus is distracted. Vitamin D has a profound effect in the front part of the brain, which kind of our relay system, and even communication between one neuron and the next needs vitamin D3. And then we get to the last one, it's feeling satisfied. So leptin tells the brain that you're full. If you don't have enough vitamin D, it's not gonna work that well. Vitamin D helps make leptin work better. Then we also have insulin. If you don't have enough vitamin D, insulin doesn't work as well, and you're gonna be hungry. Insulin allows all the nutrition to go into the cells. So if you have insulin resistance because you're low in vitamin D, you're not gonna be satisfied. So just by taking vitamin D, insulin becomes more sensitive, and you start getting more fuel to the cells, you get more nutrients to the cells. I hope this uh, helped you to understand these bizarre, unusual symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. Start taking vitamin D. Make sure you also take magnesium, vitamin K2, zinc, and B6 as the cofactors to prevent any issues and just to help it work better. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.